Singapore is smaller than New York City. It has no rivers, no lakes, no natural freshwater sources at all. Yet this tiny island now produces enough clean water to fill 32,000 Olympic swimming pools every single day. In 1965, they were begging neighboring countries for every drop. Today, they export water technology worth $2.5 billion yearly and train engineers from over 30 countries. Keep watching because you're about to discover how a nation that couldn't fill a single swimming pool naturally engineered the most remarkable water transformation in human history. Did you know Singapore receives more rainfall than London? Over 2,400 millimeters pour down on this tropical island every year. But here's the cruel twist. Without rivers to collect it or lakes to store it, 90% of that precious water simply washed straight into the ocean. Every monsoon season, Singaporeans watched billions of gallons of fresh water disappear into the salty sea while they rationed water by the bucket. The crisis ran even deeper than geography. In 1965, Singapore was expelled from Malaysia and immediately found itself held hostage over water. The humiliating 1961 and 1962 water agreements forced Singapore to buy Malaysian water at locked rates with expiration dates hanging over their heads like a countdown to catastrophe. Malaysian politicians threatened to turn off the tap during every political dispute. Imagine an entire nation's survival depending on a neighbor who could cut your life lifeline whenever they wanted. Founding father Lee Kuan Yew made a vow that would reshape his nation's destiny. He declared that water was a matter of survival and that Singapore would never be at anyone's mercy again. The race against the clock had begun. They had less than 100 years to achieve total water independence before the Malaysian agreements expired in 2061. Most experts called it impossible. Singapore called it a deadline. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, Singapore tried everything. They built reservoirs across the island, but the tiny land area meant they could only capture 10% of rainfall. The rest still washed into the sea. During severe droughts, citizens were limited to buckets of water per day. Factories shut down. The economy suffered. Public anger grew. Importing more from Malaysia seemed like the obvious solution, but proved politically dangerous. Prices kept rising. Malaysia wielded water as a diplomatic weapon, threatening cutoffs whenever negotiations turned sour. Early desalination attempts in the 1970s offered hope until the bills arrived. The primitive technology cost 10 times more than importing water, and the plants broke down constantly in the tropical humidity. Conservation campaigns helped, but couldn't solve the fundamental problem. You can't conserve water you don't have. The brutal truth became clear. Nothing worked until Singapore decided to spend impossible money on impossible technology. They would need to manufacture water independence from nothing. In the early 2000s, Singapore unveiled the most ambitious water strategy any nation had ever attempted. They called it the Four National Taps, and the vision was breathtaking. Transform the entire island into a water harvesting water recycling water manufacturing machine. By 2061, when the Malaysian agreement expires, Singapore would need zero imported water. The plan turned weaknesses into strengths. No rivers? Build your own collection system across every rooftop, every road, every surface. No lakes? Create them by damming the sea itself. Sitting on the equator meant predictable rainfall. Surrounded by unlimited seawater meant unlimited raw material. Singapore would build what nature refused to provide. The first tap expanded traditional water catchment to cover two-thirds of the entire island. Every raindrop landing on 17 reservoirs, roads, and concrete surfaces now flows into the collection system. The second tap maintained Malaysian imports as a temporary bridge while independence was constructed. The third tap desalination would extract fresh water directly from the ocean, and the fourth tap the revolutionary one would transform sewage into water purer than anything found in nature. The fourth tap carries a name that makes some people uncomfortable. New water. It's exactly what it sounds like. Sewage transformed into drinking water. When Singapore first announced this plan, critics called it disgusting. Newspapers ran headlines about drinking toilet water. But the engineering reality tells a different story. Every drop of wastewater in Singapore now travels through an extraordinary purification journey. First, it passes through microfiltration membranes with pores 300 times smaller than a human hair. Bacteria, viruses, and suspended solids are stripped away. Then comes reverse osmosis, forcing water through membranes so fine that even dissolved salts and organic molecules cannot pass. Finally, ultraviolet disinfection destroys any remaining microorganisms. The results shocked even skeptics. Independent testing proved new water is cleaner than most natural spring water. The mineral content is so low that semiconductor factories began demanding it for chip manufacturing, where even microscopic impurities ruin products worth millions. 
Today, five new water plants produce 40% of Singapore's total water demand, pumping out over 200 million gallons daily. By 2060, new water will supply 55% of national needs. The most remarkable part is the efficiency. Every flush, every shower, every dishwasher load gets captured and purified. Water that once flowed to the sea and was lost forever, now cycles endlessly through the system. Singaporeans joke that they've each drunk the same water molecules thousands of times. They're probably right. While new water recycles what Singapore already has, desalination creates fresh water from the infinite ocean surrounding the island. Three massive plants now line Singapore's coastline, using reverse osmosis to strip salt from seawater at industrial scale. The technology works like this. Seawater is pressurized to over 800 pounds per square inch and forced through polymer membranes just a few millionths of an inch thick. Fresh water molecules squeeze through, while salt molecules are too large to pass. Modern energy recovery systems capture the pressure from the concentrated brine and redirect it to incoming seawater. Cutting electricity needs dramatically. Singapore's desalination plants can now produce fresh water using only 3.5 kilowatt hours per cubic meter, about half what older plants require. The Tuas desalination plant alone produces 30 million gallons daily enough for 800,000 people. Combined desalination capacity supplies 30% of national demand, with plans to maintain that percentage through 2060, even as population grows. But Singapore pushed innovation further. The variable salinity plant at Tuas cost $270 million to build the world's first facility that switches between desalination and new water production, based on real-time demand. When reservoirs are full, the plant processes seawater. When sewage flows increase, it pivots to new water production. This flexibility maximizes infrastructure investment and ensures no capacity sits idle. In 2008, Singapore accomplished something no city had ever attempted. They transformed their most famous harbor into a freshwater reservoir. The Marina Barrage stretches 350 meters across the mouth of Marina Bay, a massive dam separating salty seawater from the freshwater now collected behind it. The engineering challenge seemed impossible. How do you convert a tidal saltwater bay into a stable freshwater lake in the middle of a dense urban area, engineers installed nine giant crest gates, each weighing over 70 tons that can release excess rainwater during storms, while keeping seawater out. Pumps powerful enough to drain an Olympic swimming pool in minutes handle storm surges. Over several years, the salt water was gradually flushed out and replaced with fresh water collected from surrounding drainage. Today, Marina Reservoir holds 1,000 Olympic swimming pools, worth of drinking water in the heart of Singapore's most developed district. Office Towers Hotels and the iconic Marina Bay Sands Casino all overlook what is essentially a massive water tank disguised as a scenic attraction. The reservoir does triple duty. It stores fresh water supply. It prevents flooding by giving monsoon rains somewhere to go. And it created Singapore's most valuable real estate above what used to be mudflats. Gardens by the Bay, the famous vertical gardens that define Singapore's skyline, grow from soil built on catchment land. The Marina Barrage didn't just solve a water problem, it created a city landmark worth billions. Beneath Singapore's gleaming streets runs infrastructure most residents never see. The deep tunnel sewerage system known as DTSS is a 48-kilometer superhighway for sewage buried 60 meters underground. The construction cost exceeded $3.4 billion and required boring machines larger than subway trains to cut through solid rock beneath the city. The tunnels slope gently downward, using gravity to pull wastewater towards centralized treatment plants without pumping. This eliminates hundreds of smaller treatment facilities that once dotted the island, replacing them with two mega plants optimized for new water production. Every toilet in Singapore eventually connects to these deep tunnels, ensuring 100% of wastewater reaches the recycling system. Phase two of the DTSS will complete in 2025, adding another 40 kilometers of deep tunnels and a second mega treatment facility. When finished, the entire nation's sewage will flow through just two processing centers capable of converting every drop into new water. No other country has achieved this level of wastewater capture. Above ground, Singapore deployed technology equally impressive. Over 300,000 sensors monitor every pipe joint and valve in the distribution network. Artificial intelligence analyzes pressure changes, detecting leaks within minutes of occurring. Repair crews receive smartphone alerts before customers even notice problems. The results speak for themselves. Singapore loses just 5% of treated water to leaks 
the global average exceeds 30%. Cities like London lose nearly 25%. Some developing nations lose over half. Every percentage point saved means millions of gallons that don't need to be produced in the first place. Smart meters in every building track consumption. In real time, letting residents see exactly how much water they use. Government dashboards monitor the entire network, identifying neighborhoods with unusual demand patterns that might indicate hidden leaks or waste. The system essentially gives Singapore X-ray vision into every drop flowing through its infrastructure. The year 2020 marked a milestone Singapore had worked toward for decades. Domestic water production exceeded 70% of national demand. For the first time in history, Singapore could survive without Malaysian imports if necessary. The impossible had become reality. That number keeps climbing. Current projections show Singapore reaching 85% self-sufficiency by 2040 and full independence well before the 2061 deadline. The nation that once begged for water now exports expertise. Engineers from 30 countries travel to Singapore annually to study their systems. Consulting contracts generate $2.5 billion in revenue. The water sector directly employs 14,000 people, with projections to double by 2040. Perhaps most remarkably, the transformation happened in one generation. Singaporeans who remember rationing water by the bucket in the 1970s now enjoy unlimited, uninterrupted supply. Their children have never known water scarcity. The psychological shift from desperate dependence to confident independence represents as much of an achievement as the engineering itself. Critics raise legitimate concerns that Singapore continues tackling. Desalination produces concentrated brine, approximately 1.5 liters of salty waste for every liter of fresh water extracted. Early discharge methods damaged marine ecosystems near outflow pipes. Singapore responded with diffuser systems that spread brine across wider areas, reducing concentration and deploying brine mining operations to extract valuable minerals from the waste stream. Energy consumption remains significant with desalination and pumping, consuming roughly 2% of national electricity. Singapore addressed this by building dedicated power infrastructure for water production, including increasing solar capacity. Research facilities backed by $670 million in government funding pursue membrane technology improvements that could cut desalination energy requirements in half within the decade. Public acceptance of new water initially lagged behind the technology. Singapore addressed the psychological barrier through transparency, inviting citizens to tour treatment plants and hosting public tastings where officials drank new water alongside skeptical residents. Today, surveys show over 90% acceptance. Young Singaporeans have grown up knowing their tap water. What Singapore achieved matters far beyond one small island. Over 2 billion people worldwide lack access to safe drinking water. By 2040, 33 countries face extreme water stress. Traditional solutions are failing. Rivers are drying. Aquifers are depleting. Climate change disrupts rainfall patterns everywhere. Singapore proved that geography is not destiny. The nation can manufacture water independence through technology investment and long-term planning regardless of natural resources. Countries from Israel to the UAE to Australia now implement Singapore-inspired systems. California sends delegations annually to study the model. India signed knowledge transfer agreements for new water technology. The World Bank's 2023 report declared Singapore the only country that has truly solved the water problem at national scale. If Singapore can do it with zero natural fresh water, any coastal nation theoretically can too. The technology exists. The engineering is proven. What's required is political will and sustained investment. By 2061, Singapore will either prove that humanity can engineer its way out of the water crisis or demonstrate the limits of technological solutions. The Malaysian Water Agreement expires in 36 years. The clock continues ticking. Singapore's water agency chief recently admitted they are not there yet and cannot afford a single delay. But every trend points toward success. Self-sufficiency percentages climb yearly. Technology costs decline. Research yields efficiency gains. The infrastructure built over decades will serve for centuries. Reservoirs filled today will provide water for generations. So what do you think? Can a city with no rivers, no lakes, and no natural freshwater become the blueprint for a thirsty planet? Could Singapore's model save drought-stricken regions across Africa, Asia, and the Americas? Or does the $30 billion price tag make this a rich nation's solution that most of the world can never afford? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to see more incredible stories about how humans are engineering solutions to impossible problems, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video from Global Uncovered.